Hey folks, Alan Mandic, the Hot Rod Hippie here. This week's video, we're gonna talk about AN fittings, plumbing with them, and some of the basics. So let's check it out. You know, whether you're plumbing something like a oil system, like with this single stage, actually rear gear pump that I have here for a Ford nine inch, you're cooling off your oil with an oil cooler or your power steering system, your transmission cooling system, or if you're just plumbing a fuel system, these AN lines, they really make for a clean, beautiful way to plumb your system. Give it that really cool look, or you can go a little stealthy here with the black fittings, the chrome fittings, the stainless fittings, and not have to be so ostentatious with the blue and red ones. I have to say the biggest thing for me is serviceability. I can install and remove the same line over and over again without worrying about cramming that hose on there, pulling it off of a fitting, having it tear, having to replace the thing. They don't seem to degrade as quickly as the regular rubber hoses do. There's no clamps to deal with. I just tighten this down as I need. When installed properly, they are significantly less likely to leak than just sliding a hose onto a fitting and clamping it with a regular worm clamp, spring clamp, something like that, or even for say your vacuum lines, a zip tie sometimes. Now on the flip side of that, of course, is expense. If you're talking about doing this properly, doing it with the highest quality stuff, say stainless steel lines, using stainless steel fittings where you want and need, then yeah, increased expense is definitely a concern here. When you start adding up all the fittings on a car, the price gets up there pretty quickly. Now first I'm gonna cover some of the important details of AN fittings, the actual specifications that you need to know for your fuel systems or whatever you're trying to plumb. Then I'm gonna show you how to both flare a hard line and assemble a soft tube setup with the tools that I personally use to do the job. Now the number one thing I wanna discuss when it comes to AN fittings is the actual size of the fittings. You'll see that they're listed in dash numbers, dash three, dash four, dash six, eight, 10, 12, and on up. Well, every one number of the dash system or however you want to classify it, is a sixteenth of an inch. So that means that dash three would be three sixteenths. Dash six would be three eighths of an inch. That's why it's the most common line size that I personally use. When it comes to transmission cooler lines, power steering pressure lines, and fuel lines, dash six is the most universal size that I personally use. The next important detail to know on these fittings is that they use a 37 degree flare you need to have the specific 37 degree flaring tool to do the job right. Now the way that the AN fittings work is they have that 37 degree male and female on both sides of the fittings that are going together. That surface contacts, it jams into itself and it squishes right up against there. It should be properly machined on both sides that they mate together seamlessly, right up against each other, no added sealant needed on this system. That is the next problem that I have seen multiple times in this industry is people putting Teflon tape on these fittings. These fittings should seal themselves. They need no sealant beyond the actual mechanical sealing surface that they have. If you're getting a leak past that seal, then you most likely have a damaged fitting, whether it be improperly machined or it got nicked on assembly. Those are problems with the fittings that is not to be fixed by sealing it with Teflon tape. If you are getting a leak like that, the proper thing to do is to go ahead and either replace the fitting entirely or use something like a lapping tool. The folks at Cool Tool actually produce a lapping tool for both male and female sides of fittings to go ahead and clean up that seat surface. It will take the anodizing or the coating off of your fitting, but it will give you a clean surface to mate back to again to fix those leaks. Now, when you're talking about AN fittings, there are a lot of adapter fittings. You don't have to use things that are purpose made for AN fittings. Something like this oil cooling radiator that I have from Earl's Performance Plumbing, this has AN O-ring fittings on it. They are the same thread as AN fittings, but they don't use the tapered seat to seal. They use an actual O-ring that seals into the body of the fitting. Now, the fitting size in this is dash 10, but I can get dash 10 O-ring down to a lot of different sizes. I have dash eight size on here because I found the application I had for this that was a good mixture of flow but not being too big of a line and still allowing good pressure through the lines. How about when I'm doing say an LS swap and I need to work with the original fuel line, the original Corvette style fuel filter, or an original fuel pump? They all have that quick connect des design. Well, I will use one of these fittings. This fitting has a screw to together design that actually locks it onto that quick disconnect. So it actually bolts kind of onto that fitting, has O-rings inside of here that make a nice seal. I've never had a problem with one of these leaking either. Fits onto that original fitting nicely, 
and converts it to AN so I can plumb away as I need in between those original components. And then of course we have the simple pipe thread to AN fitting design. This has pipe thread on one side and the AN fitting on the other. I use these very often on intake manifolds to adapt coolant ports or for adapting some types of fuel system components and such to AN. These types of fittings are basically the only place you should need to use Teflon tape when you're plumbing an AN system and that is only on the pipe thread design itself because that's part of the sealing process for pipe threads. Next important piece of information is this tubing. You need to choose your tubing properly. All the fittings I've shown you here, this hose that I'm showing you here is rubber line stuff. This is standard AN line. This is not for high pressure applications like brake lines or power steering lines. Those sig significantly higher pressures than this is rated for. This stainless braided stuff I want to say is rated for about 350 to 450 PSI. A brake system or power steering system can see pressures into the thousands thousands, eh, over a thousand anyway. So this stuff is nowhere near adequate enough for those applications. If you're working on your AC lines, your power steering lines, your brake lines, you need Teflon lined high pressure hose. All the fittings that I've shown you here, the line that I'm showing you, that stuff is not rated for those higher pressure applications. And there is also now newer stuff on the market that is actually basically just hydraulic hose that it has specially made fittings for RAN applications for say power steering lines. I have used that and I have been fairly happy with it. Now you could run soft tubing for a lot of your stuff. I have plumbed entire fuel systems on cars before with soft tube just to make my life easier on really budget projects. However, it's not necessarily the right thing to do and in some like applications it's downright wrong. When you're doing a brake system, you need to do hardline tubing. Having even the Teflon lined properly pressure rated tubing running the length of the vehicle when you're talking about that soft stuff, it will expand a little bit under pressure. If you were to run soft tubing for your entire brake system, you would have a very spongy brake pedal because you would have a lot of tube that has a chance to expand and take up that pressure that you're applying with the master cylinder. So in those brake applications, you do wanna be running steel or stainless steel line so that it can't expand under that pressure. Only using soft tubing where you have to out at the wheels, maybe from the master cylinder to meet down at the frame rail or something like that, that you can plumb that with hard line as well. Now let's talk about flaring your own hard lines. Like I mentioned, you need a 37 degree flaring tool, something like this one that I have here, or there are a lot of different ones on the market. You can find what's gonna work for you. I got this one from Matco Tools some years ago and it's done me just fine on aluminum, plain steel and stainless steel applications, though it is pretty difficult to do by hand with stainless steel, I still do manage to do it. Like I said before, this is not meant for 45 degree double flare. Like this steel hard line I have and picked up at the local auto store. I got this because I didn't want to waste some my aluminum or stainless stuff on just a demonstration for you folks and also to discuss the double flare versus single flare thing. The double flare fitting is a 45 degree angle. It will not properly seal on that sealing surface of the AN line. So what you want to do is go ahead and cut off that 45 degree flare if you have it on there or just cut off a length of your hard line you're going to be working with. Then you want to go ahead and deburr that thing. You want that to have a nice clean end on it to work with. Then install it in your 37 degree flaring tool however you need to. Personally with my tool I'm using a table here because mine wants you to have the tube flush with the end of the tool. Then follow the instructions of whatever flaring tool you're using. Mine tells you to go ahead and turn three to four full turns down into that tube to get the proper 37 degree flare. And that's it. You can see the 37 degree flare right here. That clean single flare that's going to mate onto that fitting the way it's supposed to to create a good sealing surface. Now last but not least, let's go ahead and talk about putting together a fitting and a hose assembly for yourself. I do recommend having soft jaws for a vise. A lot of different companies sell these V-Groove jaws. They have a magnetic design on the back so that they go ahead and stick to your vise. I use these whenever I'm doing AN lines. I've been using the same set for years now. They work beautifully. For cutting AN tubing, personally what I use most often now is these actual AN cutters. These are designed meant for cutting AN line. They're basically a lighter duty cable cutter. They've got that same really rounded jaw design to hold that tube right in the middle of it and cut 
fairly uniformly around the diameter of that soft tube. The only problem I can say with these is when you're doing something like dash 10 tube, they have to open very wide. I wish they were a double action, like a bolt cutter or something. So not only would it be a little bit easier, but it would also not have to open the handles as much. Now I go ahead and put the fitting nut itself, the receiver end of the fitting where the tube slips into, into a vise so I can go ahead and feed the tube in. I don't use any tape on the end of there or anything like that. You just need to make sure that all the wires aren't flared out like this line is. They need to be uniform, slim, tight against that rubber so they're not sticking out and fighting you trying to go into the fitting. Now you just go ahead and feed that rubber into the fitting until it butts up against the shoulder down in the actual nut itself. It's a little hard to see in this image here, but that thing is fed in there properly, seated up against that shoulder. Now I take my new assembly of the hose and that nut and I flip it over into the vise in the soft jaws. It is a good course of action to take this fitting and put a little bit of clean oil on there or specific assembly lube so that when you assemble it, it goes together easier, slips into the rubber and threads easier. Now, personally, I always just use a regular chrome wrench that has a nice clean face surface on it. There are specific AN wrenches, but I personally don't use them or even own them. I have found that over the years, as long as I am careful and using a quality chrome wrench, I don't tear up these fittings and I don't damage them when using them properly and carefully. One thing I can note is I would not recommend Snap-on's flank drive wrenches for using on fittings like this. That tooth design that they have cut into them will actually dig into an aluminum fitting and damage it, damage the finish on it. That is no good. I never want to see that happen. Have my tools damage the fittings for a bad finished look. Now we just tighten that thing down until shoulder meets shoulder. Shoulder of the fitting meets the shoulder of the nut. I always make sure to index it so that they are lined up nice and clean and smooth. So you don't have a point offset from a point. You can see the fitting right here. I've got it lined up pretty nicely so that it looks uniform and like it's meant to be there. That's the way they are machined so that they line up properly. You should tighten it to the point where they line up properly. It not only gives it the cleanest look, but it also just shows you that you've properly tightened that fitting. There's a lot more that goes into AN lines and properly plumbing them, bending lines, a whole lot of things. I will cover more of that in the future. Let me know if there's any specific stuff I didn't cover in this video you would like me to cover in future videos. You can find links down below in the description of this video to the tools I discussed here. So you could go ahead and pick some up for yourself if you want to give them a try and see how they help you with your AN plumbing. Go ahead and drop this video a like if you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you use AN on your fuel systems, your oil systems, your projects around the shop? Or do you just use the old hose barbs and simple system to save yourself some money? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this every week. Thanks for coming around, folks.